Okay, so everyone can see and hear? Yeah. Okay, all right, well, we'll get started then. Okay, so let's get started. So here's the first fountain project we did. <clears throat> it's a smaller rock bed, uh, roughly six feet by four feet. And this was our inspiration for the larger garden we we're going to talk about today. And although we don't have step by step this rock fountain garden, it is based on the same principles as the larger bed. Uh, we purchased this fountain from the at home store and it has a built in planter already. So we planted some plants inside of there. Um, some of which are uh, the uh, purple ones are, uh, and pardon me if I mispronounce here, but uh, the purple one is uh, Las Vegas Gomprina, and the yellow flowers are marigolds with a lantana bush to the side. So there are basically four steps to building your own rock fountain garden bed. There's design, implementation, planting, and keeping your new bed water. So let's design our garden. First, you got to decide on your size that you want it. Uh, the bed we made here is going to be 12 feet by 8 feet. Our ponytail palm plant, we want it to be our showcase plant. Uh, we've had it for 20 years in a container, and we even named him uh, early on as Iggy, and he's, he's like our family member. <laughs> Uh, and he pretty much started growing the container, so that's when we decided to put him in the ground. So he's in the ground now, and he's very happy. So what we did was we used uh, no dig landscaping edging from the local hardware store, and you don't actually need this, as you could use string or rope to shape your design of your garden. And I chose the no dig edging because it is easily bendable and shapeable to any shape you, you desire. So here Don is laying down what's called weed block. So he just takes it and um, you can see he's got bricks holding along the edge. You just cut it. Um, to fit, uh, one recommendation that we make on this, that was a lesson learned, is um, if you use a weed lock or old newspaper or cardboard, whatever you use to lay down on top of your grass, because this is going to kill the grass, help the bed grow, um, take the, it's a little trick, but take the weed lock and extend it maybe two or three inches over the design edge that you have. Because later on, we'll explain where you put boulders down. And um, having extended past the edging you have will keep that grass from growing between your uh, bed rocks that you'll, and slate that you'll be putting in later. So that's just a little trick that we were like, oh, wish we would have known that one, <laughs> so. So after we planted down the weed block, we covered one area with the garden style, and the other half of the bed with white marble rock. I'm sorry. So then we put some uh, slate pieces down. Uh, you, after, you can either lay it down either 
after the marble rock is down or you can put it before. It depends on if you want your spike pieces to look more recessed in the garden bed or just laying on top of the rock. And we recommend putting some, uh, some gardens you may see when they put the marble rock, um, they don't put any slate pieces down, but we recommend that because of um, just, it, it helps hold your garden down. And um, it really gives it a better look than just having solid rocks. You've got some flat slate pieces in there. Here we went, instead of using the uh, big water fountain that we showed at the very beginning that we made, we chose a bird bath because we have so many birds that are coming into the backyard. And so we decided where, and you can see that kind of it's off center a little bit. Um, we played around with where we wanted it to be in the bed um, and kind of um, off centered worked good. Now here, this is definitely a magic trick uh, toy that Don found. Yeah, uh, I really like this. Um, so we purchased a solar powered fountain pump for our bird bath. And in this way, I didn't need to run a power cord out into the yard or bury one underneath the ground or anything like that. Um, fountain pump has a, probably about five or six different attachments to make different types of uh, spouts or sprays. Uh, this fountain also has a battery backup for cloudy days, which works really well for a solar fountain because even uh, after the sun goes away and it, or it's shady, it'll keep working for a while. And we also found that the birds love the fountain, you know, flowing into the bird bath. Yeah, I really like this. <laughs> And I just saw a comment clear at the end. We're going to share how much everything costs. So you'll have that. So here you can see we, it looks like we kind of evenly divided it uh, just because it's a close up shot. But we have the marble rock and then we put in the soil and we started, we started um, deciding where we wanted our plants. Uh, from there. Okay, so now that our plant bed is designed, it's time to plant. So plant placement is important. Uh, you want to start with some ground cover and work your bed upwards to, to the larger plant. Um, so and. Here we planted uh, Mexican heather, some knockout roses. Um, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but uh, variegated lilio and diplodinia. And here are just some more pictures of where we um, place the plants. Uh, like Don said, it's good where you start with your ground cover first, and the, I don't think the Mexican heather's in these pictures, but it's at the Mexican heather, the ground cover, that's the actual first thing that um, we actually planted. And then from there, like you said, we just, uh, as the plants got larger, um, we planted them upward. And then on the far left, uh, we planted some rose bushes uh, and then knockout bushes, and they're doing quite well um, in that soil and in that bed. Yeah. We, yeah, we, for the, some of the larger plants with uh, larger root systems, we built the soil up a lot higher than for some of the other plants, uh, which seemed to work really well. Um, 
To get the garden a rustic look, we used an old barrel planter that Iggy, our ponytail mom, was living in. Uh, we added plants around it to enhance the rustic look, kind of a, like trying to get a Bob Ross type painting look. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And here are close-ups of uh, plants that I mentioned earlier. I need crowns. So now it's time to arrange the rock border all around the rock bed. We used a variation of moss rock and flagstone. And then I thought, okay, he's putting the rock around. Um, sorry. Uh, he's putting the rock around. We, we must be finished. So I kind of started picking up everything and you know, trying to clean up and get things over with. And the next thing I know is he had added another eight by 12 section because he liked it so much. He wanted to extend the rock um, um, garden. So I was like, okay, we're going bigger, I guess. So. Mm -hmm. So, uh, oops. Uh, so we uh, didn't put any weed block or any paper or cardboard down on this new section. I just kind of got in a hurry and forgot. So, when making your fountain garden, uh, don't forget to put something down to keep the grass out otherwise it'll it'll grow right through all the marble rock and everything else so we learned our lesson on that one yeah because we've been pulling up grass like crazy so you'll see in a little bit he puts down the marble rock but grass is growing in between so we highly recommend that you not make our mistake and put the weed block down or an old newspaper or old cardboard, um, whatever you want to piece in there. Make sure you don't end up with that unwanted grass. Okay, so here's a before and after picture after we added the x ray, about 12 foot section. Uh, yeah, like I said, I just wish I would have remembered to put the weed block down. And we use a soaker hose for keeping the garden watered. Um, you know, soaker hoses, you would find them at any of your local hardware stores. They're very nice to have for watering. And these are some finished pictures. Um, of the various end on the right, you can see the ponytail plant, and then we have the bird bath and the roses uh, on the far left, and that's just kind of balance it out in the center um, where it'll grow. When their plants are growing, they'll grow evenly, and you won't have any odd spots. So here, here's a close-up of it finished um, on the back side of it is the left picture, and then on the right is straight forward. Here are the, just to give you an idea, here are the two different water bed, water fountain beds that we made. The one on the left is the one that we um, have closest to our porch and it's small circular. You can see the foundation is just a small circular um, bed. 
where the uh, on the right is the larger rock garden with the bird fountain. Um, whether you make it big or small, the techniques that we talked about, you would use them for either one. Um, and it will turn out good as long as you remember to put your weed block down. <laughs> we can't stress that enough. <laughs> and we felt like that the garden wouldn't be complete unless we had the um, flying pig in our garden. So I found this silly little statue of a flying pig and I grabbed it up in the, the store and said, we have to have him for the, the birds. And I couldn't explain to Dawn why that made no sense for the birds. It was just, I loved it just as a funny, quirky thing to add to your, to my garden. So um, he's proudly there watching over our, ponytail plant. And Don's going to talk to you now a little bit about your shopping um, list and how much things cost. Um, and then we'll take your questions. How much did all it cost? Where did we buy the items? Uh, the bird bath fountain is a good addition to the flower bed. There are many sizes and shapes at the local hardware store or Amazon. As we noted at the beginning of the presentation, that fountain was purchased from the at-home store. So, um, store the shopping list real fast. Um, we had the Easy Flex No Gig as a 20 foot black plastic landscape edging row. That was about $20 from Lowe's. Um, so six bags of soil, two cubic feet bags, and then we used um, garden soil, and that was fifty dollars for those. And then one roll of weed block, uh, thirteen dollars for those. The concrete bird bath was forty-four dollars for those. Uh, the rock and slate was eighty-one dollars for the Gizu landscape. Uh, the plants were two hundred twenty-five dollars for those, and the solar power fountain for the bird bath was nineteen dollars from Amazon, and that was came out to a total of four hundred fifty-two dollars. Uh, you could probably budget that a little better than we did uh, just by shopping around. Um, I think you can get a better price on your plants from Houston Patio and Garden. They have a really good selection and their prices are better. Uh, we went for convenience. Um, so the flowers are more your plants or more buying them from Lowe's than, than Houston Home and Garden would be to buy. So we would, if I do another one, I would buy my plants at the Home and Garden store instead of Lowe's. But we were, it was hot that day and we were, we were working for convenience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There's a little bit of physical work to this. Yeah. Um, also, I'd like to mention that uh, the rock and slate uh, we we got from GC landscaping. They're off of um, North Houston Road, Cypress North Houston Road, and their prices are really good. It's it's kind of a mom and pop operation. Um, I shopped around for rock and slate, and these guys beat everybody uh, price wise. So I, I do recommend them. And they have soil there too. You can buy your soil or your um, whatever you may need to um, help with that. You can buy it by the truckload of your soil if you're doing uh, mulch and soil, whatever. You're, they have it there and it's very reasonable. So 
So I wanted to show you one more time just the two different fountains. Um, Don mentioned the fountain on the left, the bigger fountain. We did get that one from the at-home store. They have a good selection. Um, their bird baths were plastic though, and we wanted a concrete one for for the the bird uh, fountain bed. Um, but they do have for their larger um, fountains at home store. They do have a good selection. They're getting rid of some of their summer things right now, so those fountains are on sale right now. If you're thinking about maybe making one. And you could check there and see there because they are on sale. Um, so uh, that is the presentation. And then let me ask, answer some of your questions. Let me see if I can do this. I see where Tracy <laughs> asked a question about um, how, how did you like I'll, I'll just retrace this question. Yeah. Um, so we I answered. Did you plant on top of the weed blocker or did you have to cut into it to get the bigger plants in? Um, what we do, we did for that um, is literally it's thin enough where you can just take your hand shovel when you're planting and just poke a hole through it and dig your dirt. Uh, it you don't want um, it open in very many places because wherever you have open, grass will grow. You know how grass is. You know it's beautiful, but it it'll grow everywhere you don't want it to grow. So um, don't cut into it for the bigger plants. Take in our case, we took more soil and added more soil instead of digging into the actual, yeah. the earth yeah. uh, that just worked out better for us and then we knew we had a solid foundation so tracy if you're doing it or someone else doing it um suggestion would be lay whatever you're using down and build it up with soil instead of your ground uh, the earth I was wondering, um, what do you do to use to border that? Well, that would look like some kind of a vinyl um, pipe or something. On the design part? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Don can tell you yeah. about that. Yeah, uh, it's, it's like, a, yeah, I guess it's kind of like a vinyl type edging. It, it's probably about uh, three inches tall or so. And what I did, it's like saying it's very bendable and flexible, and you use spikes to uh, uh, hammer it down in the ground. And I just kind of, as I went shaping it, I'd uh, nail it down and just worked it around like that. Uh, and that's also, it's, but having the three inch or so border like that, it helps keep the rocks and everything inside of the, the bed. And it's called uh, no dig is what it's called. It's called no so, dig. Mm -hmm. And I see you're asking about uh, the larger fountain that we have. It's not solar powered. Uh, it has a cord. Uh, the the bed the fountain is at the end of a small porch that we have. So it's the uh, fountain is a little bit to the right. It's off centered. And Don ran, ran a electrical cord down the side. I you can't even see it, but then he put the switch right by um, his chair where he sits outside, so he doesn't even have to get up to turn it on. He just leans <laughs> over. <laughs> he just leans over and switches it on. So if, if he could find a way to make that one solar, uh, he probably would. But uh, it it's electric and it, by a little. Snip of a finger, it, it comes on. So, and it's not, it's nice. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Jackie, I haven't had any problem with the, with home gardens 
honoring products that die. Um, I don't know if that's a store by store. You know, you have get a good manager or bad manager. I haven't mm-hmm. I haven't experienced that problem. But if you are concerned, then um, you know you could use Lowe's. I think Lowe's and Home Depot might guarantee. I'm mm-hmm. not I'm not mm-hmm. sure about Home Depot. Um, let's see. What did you use? board of the garden do we answer that question okay uh, oh what are the flowers behind the pig they are called, <laughs> they're called uh let him look the name up and then um uh, Petunias yeah. are there with it too. Yeah. With the turns of the page for the pig. And I use petunias to go outside of the on the pig slide. Um they were easier to look to grow well out from the um barrel. So I used petunias. You could use any ground cover. Um Dawn's looking at it. Yeah, the the pictures you see exactly are they're striped petunias is what they're called. Hmm. How long uh, did this take? It took a um, we took one day to go and pick up our materials, and then we took the next day. We had a long weekend. And we took that next day and built it. It took about what? How many hours? Um, it was so hot. That, uh, <laughs> that weekend. It uh, should have taken us around four hours, yeah. but it took us about six hours because it was Wrong. it was so hot. We had to keep stopping. So, uh, but for that size. Uh, and I, the total size of, of the garden um, is, um, I don't remember how big that one. We added the 8 by 12 and then yeah. the other section. And it was 8 by 12 to begin with, and then we added the other section. Uh, so, I don't know, I, I haven't really measured the entire thing since we finished, but probably... Uh, 12 by 12, 16, 16 by 12. I'm, I'm not sure really. Any other questions? Well, this is really interesting. You guys are very talented. Uh, yeah. Well, it, 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 it's Dawn. <laughs> <laughs> You're the helper bee, right? <laughs> I'm the helper bee, yeah. I'm, I'm standing there looking at the rocks going, oh, okay, so, but it turned out the, we didn't, on the larger bed that we made by our porch, we did not put the big boulders because we needed a walking path, so that one is a little different. It doesn't have the border of, of the boulder rocks, but it does have the slate on it. Um, anything else? Well, thanks, everybody, and I'm so psyched. Thanks for the help we had with our technology. Yes. <laughs> we provided yeah. a little help from our friends. And um, so thank you. And I just wanted to, next week we have Dory is going to teach us how to use Libby, which is our ebook mm-hmm. database. So that should be for all you guys who can't get to curbside pickup. You still have the online book. So Dory will do step by step. We'll learn how to get free online books. Okay, well, thank you again. And it was our pleasure. Thank you, everybody. Yes, bye if bye, you, everybody. If you, take, if you make one and take a picture of it and send it to me, I'd love to see it. All the yeah. different ways. If, yeah. if someone makes, you know, someone makes a, a bed, if send us a send picture. A picture I'll, I'll, I'll put the picture on the website. If you yeah. Send yeah, that would be great if any of you, you know, make one, so. Thanks, guys. We enjoyed it. Don't forget to unrecord us. Click end. (laughs)
Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Mm -hmm.